Tell me this pen. This pen is pretty cute. You can see a little Santa here. And it's so special. It's very Christmassy. And you can use it as a Christmas present, as a birthday present. It's very smooth in writing. And you can use it either side for writing. You can write it upside down, even in space. This pen is the best seller among all other pens in the market. And you can't get it anywhere. This is one of the last few stocks that we have on hand in the market. Get it before. It finishes. Is that how a typical salesman sells a pen? Well, I would say 95% of people out there would sell this pen in this way. This is what he will do. He will describe everything about the features of this product, the benefits of this pen, and try to get you to buy it. This is the mistake of most people, even myself. Hi, I'm Jules T and welcome to Jules T's channel. This channel is about public speaking, communication and mental health. We are going to talk about how to sell a pen. In life, everybody is trying to sell something. Maybe you're not trying to sell a specific product, maybe a specific service. This technique is going to help you in many areas of your life. Like probably you want to get them to buy into your program. Probably you want them to accept the proposal of your project. So this are some tips on how you can get audience to buy into your concept or buy your products. When someone asks you to sell a pen, it doesn't mean really selling this pen, but rather knowing what your buyer wants. You need to focus on the person that is buying. What are their problems they're having? What challenges do they face? What do they actually need? So you have to dwell into questions. The more detailed your questions, the more information you're going to get about them. So the thing is, if you don't ask questions, then you're basically guessing why they're trying to get this pen. And how do you know your guesses are right? Most likely, you're maybe guessing the wrong thing. Do you love shopping? I, for one, I love shopping a lot. And one of the best experiences while shopping is shopping with your best friend or with your mom. It's so fun because when you go out there, you take you look at clothes together and you look for clothes that match each other and match the body shape of the person, the outlook of the person. So you will say things like, wow, this dress looks so good on you. This shirt matches the tone of your hair color. It looks so elegant on you. After you buy it, you feel that it's the best product you ever bought. Why? Because the person that you're with actually gives you feedback. You, the person that you're with actually knows what you like and what matches you the most versus a bad sales experience. This happens when I walk down the shopping aisles and then this credit card salesman will come running up to me and as they are running and I will say, no, no, I have it. I have all the credit cards that you're going to try to sell me. Before they even open their mouths, I have already said no. Why? Because they haven't quite built a rapport with me and the moment they see me, they are just trying to sell me a card. This card has the best benefits, it gives you the best cashback and it gives you all the flyer miles. You can collect all the points and reclaim for items and gifts. Basically, the salesman is so eager to close the sale, he didn't really focus on listening to what the buyer's needs are. They don't care what you need, they basically just ram the thing down your throat. And that's not a very good experience for many. So what should you do when you are trying to sell a pen? First of all, build rapport. It is important to get to know the other person first. Sometimes it takes time to get to know a person. You may try your patience. But whenever you sit down for a discussion, for example, I'm in the IT consulting line. When I make a phone call to my internal customers, I will start the conversation with asking them how's their day, how's the weather there, or have you had lunch yet? You find a common ground to talk about and it helps to relax the conversation before you dive deep into the technical details. And usually I find this technique quite useful because once that, that kind of relationship is built, the kind of trust is built, it is easier to conduct a conversation or it's easier to sell them the concept that you're trying to promote. And once you have built the rapport, 
make sure that you give them the best service you can or make sure you promote the right products to them. That way, they are willing to then sit down and listen to what you have to say next. Step number two is to ask the right questions. You need to ask wiser questions, meaning questions that are more pointed to what are their needs and what are the problems that they're facing, what they're trying to solve, what they're trying to run away from. So how long have you been looking for this pen? And what kind of pen are you looking for? Are you looking for a pen for to use for your business or you're looking for a pen for your personal use? And how much budget have you allocated to buy a pen? Usually what kind of pens do you buy? The expensive ones or the cheap ones? So the key point is to understand what your clients need and value and then sell them what they need. Another thing when you ask questions is to realize that people usually do not buy because of logic. I don't buy a shirt at the mall because I, I don't have a shirt. I have lots of my shirts in my cupboard. I have lots of dresses. But I buy a new dress because I feel good when I wear one. A new dress. I feel that it makes me more confident wearing it. So basically, I'm shopping because of my emotions, because it makes me feel happy, it makes me feel confident. What about your clients? Are they buying a house because they have some kind of ego to maintain? Is it because they want to show to the society that they are doing well? So by buying a big house, it helps to bring the confidence of the family towards him. It makes him feel good. Or are they buying this massage chair for their mother? because they, are, they want to feel generous to their moms? Or are they buying cryptocurrency because they just don't want to miss out? They see their colleagues and friends buying cryptocurrency and they have this FOMO, fear of missing out and they just need to buy cryptocurrency just because everybody is buying it. Or are they buying this travel package because they just want to escape from their 9 to 5 job and this travel package allows them to go for a one year honeymoon with their their loved ones. So you have to understand what your client actually needs and then you're able to direct them to the products that fit their profile. Remember, don't push your products to people. Don't force somebody to buy the pen but rather you need to push those emotional hot buttons, what they feel, what they fear. Focus on those and then you'll be able to solve their problems. There's this thing called the pain avoiding tendency, meaning they're trying to escape some kind of pain. They are not buying the way to get something, but rather they're buying product to get out of something. So they are buying this slim machine because they want to get out of this feeling of feeling fat and feeling not confident they want to get out of this cycle so they buy this slimming machine so they subscribe to this program the seven day program to help them to get rich they want to get out of this nine to five job and find another alternative job which allows them to get rich easily and in a fast way so that they can live their lives as they want it you have to find out what are they trying to escape from what kind of pain they're experiencing and they want to get away from from there you're able to know how this product can help them escape the pain that they're facing and when you are able to create that urgency to get the product then they would want to buy the product because this product will help them to get up of their current situation as fast as possible. And the most important thing when you try to sell someone something is to close the sale. Many times people will just talk about the benefits, the features of the product and they will talk about everything else except closing the sale. Once you have realized that you have cleared all objections, then it is the time for you to close the deal. So it's important to ask for the money, ask them if they want to close this deal, ask them if they want to move forward, if they want to pay it by cash or they want to put down a down payment. By not asking it, then it defeats the purpose of selling a pen or a product or a service. So in summary, when you want to close a deal, make sure number one, you rapport with the person, with the client. Build that kind of relationship with them. Number two, ask questions and ask the right pointed questions. Understand what they need, why they're looking for this item and what kind of problems are they trying to solve. And with that, you know what items that you think that will fit their criteria. Finally, you close that deal. So it is important 
to qualify your client. Make sure that they're the right ones for you. Don't be afraid to ask questions. So remember, it is not about selling the pen. It is how you try to sell the product, how you understand your client, how you understand their problem, their needs, the tonality, the approach, your posture. If you're confident enough and they feel that they can trust you, then you got that sale. So I hope you enjoyed this sharing. Feel free to share this video if you feel there's someone that can benefit from this video. I hope to see you in my next video.